In my opinion, Storyline is a very powerful tool, but let's be honest, it can also eat up a lot of time. And when you're doing what feels like a million clicks every day, it can really start to drive you a bit crazy. So over the years, I have collected and tested over 70 little time savers that make building faster, smoother and way less frustrating. In this video, I'll show you the ones that save the most time and make the biggest difference. Let's start with keyboard shortcuts. In slide view, if I want to insert a picture, I can use Control J on my keyboard. So if I press Control J, this window opens up, I can choose a picture and then open it. And uh, now it's on my slide. And um, let's try to remember this shortcut uh, with this trick. Um, J stands for JPEG. So maybe you can remember it like this. J standing for JPEG, Control J inserts a picture. Okay, the next one is adding a text box and the um, keyboard shortcut is Control T. And um, now I can type something and then I have a text box. And um, as you see, this is in uh, Montserrat Extra Bold and um, it's a rather, rather large uh, font. And if I am not happy with the formatting of this text um, that appears when I use the um, Control T shortcut, um, I can change it. First of all, I would format it. So maybe I want to change it to just Montserrat and make it uh, I don't know, 18, and then I will do a right click and then I can set it as default text box. And now every time I use Control T, um, it is in the exact same formatting. Okay, and to remember this shortcut, um, Control T, T stands for text. And now maybe I want to put this text here in the center of my slide. Um, first of all, I could use the smart guides to align it to the center. So now the text box is aligned to the center, but the text isn't. I could use this um, button right here, but I can also use the um, shortcut Control plus E on my keyboard. And now it's in the middle of my slide. And how do I remember this? Um, Control L is for align to the right. Uh, align to the left, sorry. Uh, control R is for align to the right and Control E is for center. So how could we remember this? Um, maybe we could just say it stands for equal margins on both sides. So Control E, equal margins. Um, the next thing that I want to show you, which you are probably familiar with, is uh, Control Z and it's to undo the last thing that you've done and then control Y to redo the last step. And we could remember this by um, thinking of the alphabet. Z is the last letter in the alphabet and um, it's to undo your last move. And Y is right before Z and it's to redo or move forward again. Okay, and then um, we can also use Control D to duplicate objects. And this works for elements on our slides. It works for slides. So if I click on the slide and then um, hit Control D, I get a duplicate of the slide. And I can also use this for layers. I choose the layer, click Control D, and then I get a copy of this layer. The next thing that I want to show you is that you can use Control G to group elements on your slide, but you first have to choose which elements you want to group. And let's say I want to group everything that I have on my slide. I could use um, holding down the control key and then clicking everything that I want. And I could also um, draw a rectangle with my mouse um, to choose everything that I want. And then I will hit control G and now, as you can see here, I have a group. If I want to ungroup, I can use Control Shift G. And um, let's group this again. 
um, if I don't, if I can't remember control shift G, I can also use a right click and then say group and then ungroup. And yeah, G stands for group. I think uh, this is easy to remember. And another thing that I want to highlight is um, that you need to save your progress frequently uh, with Storyline. And of course, we have our little floppy disk icon, but we can also use the keyboard shortcut Control plus S to um, just save and um, yeah, help ourselves in case of emergency. Um, you will thank yourself that you have uh, saved your progress um, once Storyline crashes. And yeah, S stands for save. I think it's also easy to remember. And another thing that uh, I think you will do often when you use Storyline is previewing. We have our um, F12 key to preview the whole project. And we can use Control plus F12 to uh, preview just one slide. And then we can use uh, Shift 12 to preview the whole scene. And if we have um, chosen multiple slides or even multiple scenes, um, we can use Control Shift F12 to preview just the selected elements. As you can see here, I get a preview of two slides. Okay, and how do we remember F12? Um, if we look at the F keys on our keyboard, there are 12 and uh, F12 is to the very right. And it's just like in Storyline, the preview button sits to the very right of our ribbon on the tabs. So if I look at the slides tab, it's to the very right. If I look at the design tab, it's to the very right. Um, yeah, maybe you can remember it that way. Okay, and then I have another shortcut that I want to show you, but it's uh, sadly, it's uh, not working due to my uh, recording software that uses this uh, shortcut for something else. But um, yeah, I can just point to it. If you want to add another slide in the same layout as this slide right here that you have selected or that I have selected, you can just use Control plus M and it will add a slide in the same uh, layout. Okay, and then uh, another thing that I want to show you is um, you can use the escape key to switch from text edit mode to object mode. And this comes in especially handy when you're working with text. Um, for example, now I'm in text edit mode and I can't move uh, the text box. And if I use the escape key, I can just drag it around and I can also format the whole um, text box. And yeah, over the years I've grown accustomed to um, clicking on the border and then making sure that the border is solid and then uh, knowing that I'm in object mode. But yeah, the escape key can save you some time here. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to show you is that you can, um, holding down your control key, you can zoom in and out of um, your slide if you use the mouse wheel of your mouse. So I am holding down the control key. Yeah, I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in all the way and then I can zoom out again um, just by holding down the control key. These were my favorite keyboard shortcuts, but um, Storyline lets you save even more time with a few buttons and tools that you just have to know about. So uh, please let me show you. As you can see right now, we are zoomed in all the way and it might be a bit hard to find the right zoom so that you can work on the whole slide again. For this, there is a little button and it's to the very uh, bottom and to the very right of Storyline and it's down here and it's the Fit Slide to Current Window button. And if I click it, you can see it just snaps and it fills out the stage perfectly. And the next thing that I want to show you is the Format Painter. Um, let's switch to this scene. 
and um, you can use the format painter to copy the formatting like font, size, color and effects of objects. And um, yeah, let's try this right here. I will uh, use this text box and uh, use the escape key and now click on format painter in the home tab and then use it to format this text right here. And I can do the same thing with my um, shape. Again, clicking the format painter and I can even do it with the button. And as you can see, it also um, copies the object states. So normally this button would have uh, these states and um, it gets the copied states from this button right here and then they're also here. And another thing that you can do with the Format Painter is double click it. So I will, um, I have chosen this uh, shape right here, double click the Format Painter and now I can go across scenes and format objects until I decide to uh, stop um, the Format Painter. And I can do this by either pressing the Escape key on my keyboard or um, clicking the Format Painter again. Okay, just know that there is also an Animation Painter. So if you have animations on an object, you can use the Animation Painter to uh, move animations across to other objects. And um, it also works with the double click um, as I've shown you. Okay, let's say you want to swap out a picture. I have a picture right here. It has um, an effect. So it has this border right here. It has an animation. So it has a fly in animation and it's also placed on the timeline. If I were to delete and reinsert, I would have to do all of this over again, but I don't want that. And um, yeah, I can just uh, right click the picture and then say replace picture. Or I could also go to the picture tools, click on format and then click on replace picture. And let's uh, choose picture from file. And I have another picture right here that I want to swap out. And then you can see the only thing that isn't uh, kept is the cropping and the size, but I can do this real quick. So let's crop it a bit here and maybe crop it a bit here and then uh, click crop again and then I can make it a bit larger and I've swap swapped out my picture. We have preserved the effects, the animation and the timeline position. Yeah, let's say we have a picture that is used multiple times across our project and we want to swap it out in all of those instances. Um, this is possible thanks to the media library. Not to be confused with the content library, the media library, um, let's open it from the view tab here, media library. So what I wanted to say, the media library uh, stores all the images, characters, audio and video that you have inside of your project. For example, I could use it to change the alt text for a picture and it would apply it to all the instances where this picture is used. And you can also see how often it's used and where it's used. But there's an even better way to open up the media library for our use case because we want to swap out this picture everywhere that it's used. We can do a right click and then say show in media library and it will jump to the exact position in the media library. And then I can say that I have uh, four uses and I can also look at where they are. I can flick through here and it seems to also be on um, 1.2 and if I want to look at it, I can just jump to this location with this button right here. And then I can see, ah, okay, it also seems to be on my 1.2 introduction slide. You can um, replace the image with this button down here and then you can choose again picture from file, content library, photos and so on and it will 
um, just like I've shown you before, preserve um, everything and um, will replace the pictures in all of those um, slides. Okay, and um, our last time saver is um, actually multiple time savers um, wrapped into one because I'm going to show you how you can animate text according to audio narration. And our examples, our example is the learn objectives right here. And you can see um, that we have a text box and we have an animation and um, the animation is wipe. So let's uh, do a preview right here, down here on the timeline. Welcome to this course and you can on see information that it just wipes in from the left all at once and um, you can apply an animation by paragraph. So you don't have to split this up into multiple text box. You can just use the effect options and click on by paragraph and then you get this little triangle right here and if you click on it um, you can see that you have multiple objects that you can move around on the timeline. And now the question is, um, when should the learning objectives show up? And we have another um, time saver for this, and it's called cue points. Um, as I preview this on the timeline, I can use cue points to uh, make a mark up here and then move these elements according to the cue points. So um, I will now listen to um, the narration and then I will hit C every time uh, the text is reflected. So um, let's click on play. Welcome to this course on information security. In this course, this you'll course learn how to safeguard critical safeguard. data, how to handle data interactions handle. with outsiders securely, and how to adopt, how to adopt. daily habits that contribute okay. to... So I have my four cue points for all of these um, paragraphs and I could move them like this, but I could also do a right click and then click on align to cue point and then choose the um, cue point. And that way I will get an, the animations according to my um, cue points and according to my narration and this is really fast and I think that the combination of these um, time savers just can save you so much time when you're doing this work. So let's look at this one more time. Welcome to this course on information security. In this course you'll learn how to safeguard critical data, how to handle interactions with outsiders securely, and how to adopt daily habits that contribute to a safer work environment. So I think uh, this looks good. And uh, I hope a few of these tips make your next project a little easier and maybe even help you uh, to stay sane uh, when working with Storyline. And um, if you found this helpful, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will try to provide more practical Storyline tips for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Bye.